Hello and a very good morning from the beautiful seaside town of Weymouth in Dorset. Now it's a beautiful day for a train ride and I'm about to head up the heart of Wessex line to Bristol Temple Meads with Great Western Railway. Should be a nice little run, two and about two and a half hours up to Bristol. Um, so yeah, let's just head up to Weymouth Station and uh, see what it's all about. Now the station here in Weymouth is located in the town centre and just a short walk away from the seafront. While Weymouth station originally opened back in 1857, the station now consists of this rather dingy building dating from the mid-1980s. The station is really nothing to write home about, with the small foyer containing just a ticket sales counter, a self-service ticket machine and a small departures board. Weymouth Station is home to three platforms and is the end of the line, being the southern terminus of both the Heart of Wessex Line and the Southwestern Main Line. Our train, which is the 0850 to Gloucester, will be departing from Platform 1 today. While the service we're catching is operated by GWR, most of the services to and from Weymouth are operated by Southwestern Railway, with the station seeing two trains per hour to London Waterloo throughout the day. Most of these are operated by SWR's Class 444 EMUs, such as the one on the opposite platform, which you can find my review of in the top right corner of the screen now. Anyway, digression aside, here comes our train arriving on its inbound service. Our ride up to Bristol will be operated by this two car long Class 158 Express Sprinter diesel multiple unit. 182 of these were built between 1989 and 1992, with the type having a top speed of 90 miles an hour or 145 kilometers an hour. No seat reservations were offered on this train and all seating is standard or second class, so I'm free to sit where I please. First impressions are that this is a really nice looking train. The moquette on the seats is really subtle and smart in my opinion, and the lighting doesn't make you want to reach for your sunglasses as it often does on British trains. Now I appreciate that I'm not exactly the shortest guy on the planet, but I think that legroom is still very tight, even for a regional train. As you'd expect, a tray table was provided at each of the airline style seats, although I found these to be rather flimsy. One feature I didn't necessarily expect given the train's age was that there's both a 3-pin and two USB plug sockets by the window seats, which I think is a nice addition. While they may not exactly be spacious, these seats do more than make up for this with their comfort. While they have obviously undergone cosmetic refurbishments throughout their life, I'm pretty sure that these are still the original seats that these trains had when they first entered service. As the train wasn't too busy, for now at least, I've moved to one of the bays of four so I can stretch out a bit. As you'll soon see though, this didn't last for very long. Anyway, before we set off, I think we should just take a quick look at our route for today. Our journey will see us heading north on the Heart of Wessex line, via the likes of Dorchester, Yeovil, Castle Carey and Bath, before arriving into Bristol for a total distance travelled of 87 miles or 140 kilometres. Scheduled travel time to Bristol Temple Meads is 2 hours and 37 minutes and our top speed will be 90 miles per hour. And we depart Weymouth bang on 10 to 9. A 
few minutes after departure, we arrive at our first calling point, Upway, which is in the Weymouth suburbs. We soon branch away from the southwestern mainline and, a short while later, arrive at our next calling point of Dorchester West. This is one of two stations serving Dorset's county town, the other being the nearby Dorchester South, which is served by the London-bound Southwestern Railway Services. It was also here in Dorchester that I realised the train was perhaps not going to be as quiet as I had previously anticipated, so I moved back to an airline-style seat here. Well, I said at the start of the video that this was a beautiful day for a train ride, and that sure has come true as we cross the Dorset Downs. I noticed that at a lot of the stations, there were stop markers for HSTs. Now I'm not aware of any operating on this route, but did they perhaps used to in the past, or is this maybe planned for in the future? If you happen to know, be sure to let me know in the comments. A number of stops en route today are request stops, meaning that the train will only stop if someone wants to get on or off, such as here in Chetnall. Anyway, time for a quick wonder. The train was really quite busy by this point, so sorry if it's a bit short and sweet. Despite the fact that the train was busy, I found that there was still plenty of space for storing luggage on overhead racks and on the larger stacks at the end of the saloon. A toilet can be found in each coach and everything you might expect to be here was, they were clean which is always good to see and functioning as intended. One of the coaches also has space for a couple of bicycles. Usage of these is free and, while you are highly recommended to reserve these in advance, it isn't mandatory. Another couple of things I unfortunately didn't catch on camera, the other coach has both spaces for wheelchair users and an accessible toilet. Anyway, we're now just pulling into our next stop, Yeovil Penn Mill. Again, this is one of two stations serving the Somerset town. The other being Yeovil Junction on the London Waterloo to Exeter line. You can find my review of that route in the top right corner of the screen now. One last feature, this train is kitted out with Wi-Fi throughout. It's not exactly the fastest out there, but to be honest, I wasn't really expecting anything more than this. Another thing worth giving a mention to is that no catering is provided on this service, at least at the time of filming. Next up is Castle Carey, which is of course notable for being the closest station to the annual Glastonbury Music Festival. You can change here for services towards London and Penzance. We ended up picking up about 5 minutes of delay here, as we had to wait for another service to pass us before proceeding. <laughs> Yeah. 
Our next notable stop is Froom, which, according to the language learning app Babbel, is the most mispronounced place name in the UK. Now I appreciate that this largely includes non-native English speakers, but I can certainly think of many places that I would have thought are much harder to pronounce. <laughs> Now sorry for the slightly lacklustre view of our next stop, Westbury, but this is another important interchange, with the station being served by trains towards London and Penzance, Wessex mainline services towards Southampton and Portsmouth, as well as the heart of Wessex services. <laughs> Be sure to keep an eye out for this lovely little stretch of line as we approach Bradford on Avon. She thought we were older than 16. She thought we were 16 or older. About 20 minutes out of Bristol, we pull into arguably our most notable stop, Bath's Bar. Bath is the largest city in the county of Somerset and is famed for its well-preserved Roman baths. While I haven't visited the baths myself, I did stop off in the city on my way back down the Heart of Wessex line and can honestly say it's well worth a visit if you're ever in the vicinity. Before we know it, we're at our final calling point of Keensham and fast approaching the end of our journey today. Overall, I thought this was a pretty nice journey with plenty of rather pleasant scenery en route. GWR's Class 158 trains are a pretty nice match for this route, being comfortable and providing a relatively smooth ride. That said, I have travelled the length of this route a few times now. And I must say that even the three carriage class 158 are often subject to overcrowding, particularly towards Bristol. So, how much did all this cost me? Well, I was travelling on a Heart of Wessex Day Ranger, which included unlimited off peak travel for the day between Weymouth and Bristol, as well as a few other select places, although I'll leave a link to more information on this in the description below. The cost of this is £14.80 or £22.50 with and without a rail card respectively and can be bought on the day. If you're just looking for a ticket for this route then they cost £22.80 for an off-peak single or 10p extra for an off-peak return. It wouldn't appear that GWR are offering any advanced singles which are typically much cheaper on this route which is a shame. So overall a rather pleasant journey but what did you make of it all? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. And 
with that, welcome to Bristol's stunning Temple Mead station, where we arrive around five minutes late at half past eleven. Well, that was a rather enjoyable journey up from Weymouth. Um, even if the train was rather busy, um, there were actually people standing in the vestibules. I don't know if you really saw that on video, so sorry if some of the shots weren't as good as I'd like them to be. But anyway, yeah, um, I do hope you enjoyed. Um, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Friday. And yeah, um, thanks for watching.